It's so loud. All right, I'm having some issues with my Starlink setup. I've been using it for about a month and uh, actually functionally the internet works fine. Um, I did tilt the dish down a little bit on my roof rack because water was like perfectly pooling on the dish. And so it would rain and then after it rained, it would just not work. So I still get some interference, some dropouts when it's raining, but it's much better. So I don't have to constantly be on the roof drying that thing off. But the big thing is there is a noise problem with this power supply. At least I think that's what's happening. And you would not believe how extreme this noise is. So I first noticed the noise uh, coming from the window coverings, actually. So in my window coverings, I have little neodymium magnets, and these were sitting on top of the wire that was feeding power to the Starlink dish, and it was causing the magnets to vibrate. And it took me forever to figure out uh, why there was a noise coming from my window coverings. I didn't believe for the longest time that it could be these magnets, but then I held a magnet up to the power wire and it was like shaking in my hand. So with my first Amazon haul, I picked up some of these ferrite beads, hoping that would quiet it down, but these just started singing like crazy. And then I also got a replacement power supply. It was supposed to be a different form factor than this. It's weird, like all these power supplies seem to have the same form factor. The picture of this one showed a much bigger power supply, but this is what I got. And the same thing happened here. Uh, I was actually supposed to get a smaller form factor, but it wound up being the exact same power supply. It even had the same wires. So like, like this one at least uses a different manufacturer for the output wire, and this is a little bit heavier gauge. So maybe the components in here are a little better. That's probably the one I'm gonna try first. And then I have an array of power supplies here. And obviously something like this, I think will work. Uh, it's definitely got the hardware, it's definitely got the capacitors and the inductive coil, but uh, I'll have to tune this manually and it's a pretty big thing. So I'm hoping I can return this because I, I really don't wanna try to find a place for this to live permanently. But the, the big problem with the noise, as you can probably see, is that it has killed my LED lights. I don't even have the Starlink dish on right now and that light is flickering. And I first noticed this um, when like even this light would flicker, my overhead lights would flicker and my porch light would all be flickering. And I turned the Starlink off and all the flickering stopped. And I think part of the problem is I'm using cheap dimmer switches. So uh, these LED modules were already not very happy with the power they were getting and then that extra level of interference getting giving the the drivers really dirty power um, has caused a lot of these modules to fail so i'm going to replace all of these uh, lights that i have in the ceiling and i'm going to replace my dimmer switches with something higher quality so hopefully that won't be an issue in the future and then of course the worst part is anytime i turned on my stereo there was tons of noise coming out of the speakers and it didn't matter if I was on Bluetooth or auxiliary, it was really loud. And uh, I solved that issue by uh, ripping out the uh, power converter that I had for my Max Air fan and wiring it up to the stereo. So the stereo has its own separated power supply and that's been great. I always have noise issues with audio equipment on these 12 volt systems. You can hear the uh, solar charge controller and that has eliminated all of that noise. So I use a separated power supply and then a ground loop isolator for the auxiliary in and my stereo is quiet so that's really awesome but I've still got to figure this out because it's killing my lights and it's also really annoying having my window coverings hum. So that was obviously a fail. I also ordered these big ferrite rings so I'm gonna try running the wires through this and see if that quiets things down at all. All right, so we set the voltage to 50, turn the output on, and then we realize that this is a step-down converter and not a boost converter. Boo. This power supply seemed to be the least noisy out of the bunch. And then I've got this inductor ring. I really don't know if this is going to work at all. We're really getting outside of my area of expertise here, but maybe this will work. 
I still feel like I'm diagnosing this because it seems so unlikely that I would get five bad power supplies from Amazon, but uh, I've totally eliminated the router. It's not getting power. We're going through this induction ring, through the power supply, and then to the PoE injector. Um, obviously I can unplug the router, but like the instant I unplug this ethernet cable, the noise stops. So, I really don't know what to do. Ta da! Well, that was a tedious way of spending the afternoon. So the old dimmer switch has had a really high switching frequency, which is probably what killed the drivers on these. And these are safe to be driving LEDs that have drivers because they have a much lower switching frequency, but it's so low, it causes like a uh, motion blur. I'm sure this looks crazy on camera, but um, oh, it's so frustrating. All right, I've been to four electrical supply places, called a handful more, and uh, yeah, maybe if I was in Seattle, I would have some success, but honestly, I kind of don't think so. Um, short of setting up a mailing address to get this higher quality power supply, I think I'm just gonna be stuck with what I have. I've got like seven power supplies <laughs> in the van right now, and before I return all these, I'm gonna try to cobble something together. I bought this on accident. It's a 24 volt to 48 volt converter. And I figure I can use this guy to step up 12 to 24 and then go from 24 to 48. And maybe by making two steps, we will eliminate the noise. If this doesn't work, I'm just gonna slap a power supply in there and hope we don't have any more issues. Um, I'm hoping that these new dimmer switches are more resilient to the noise and nothing else has gone wrong. So maybe this is a problem I don't need to fix. Uh, the, the buzzing is annoying. <laughs> it seems pretty extreme, but I can't be the only one who's dealing with this and I haven't seen a whole lot of other people report problems. So maybe I'm making a big deal out of nothing. All right, so this is the power wire right here and these are the window covering magnets. So I'm just gonna reroute power wire so it's not running along these magnets here. I've decided to call that good enough. I'm ready to stop thinking about this. The lights um, are working again. They do flicker just a little bit, but it's not too bad. So as much as I may have wanted to put this problem behind me, I continued to have problems. First of all, I had another LED module fail on me, and then I noticed that my Starlink speeds were really slow. And unfortunately, I threw out the power supply that was working before, and I think that this power supply is just worse than the one I had before, so it's causing interference on the dish side, in addition to just being noisy in general. And then one day I was looking at my battery monitor, and I noticed that I was only getting about 100 watts of solar charging, even though my van was sitting in direct sun at high noon. So I realized that I probably had a problem there, and I was able to trace that down to the cable between the main breaker and my bus bar. And the lug on the main breaker was hot to the touch, thankfully not hot enough to burn me or melt plastic. And then once I tightened that down, I was getting full charging again, and my lights stopped flickering. Something that I had been thinking about is that my batteries haven't been full in months, and I just figured that was because the Starlink dish was using a lot of power, and I hadn't really been prioritizing parking out in the sun so I could get full charging. So my batteries have just been floating at around 30 to 60% for months now, and uh, sure enough, as soon as I tightened that lug, I was back at 100% in just a few days. And then this happened. This just started running on full. Aha! Oh no! <laughs> Something very wrong is happening here. Oh my god. All right, all you guys told me that Max Airfan had fixed their motor driver. Well, guess what? I can't turn it off. Here I am editing this video and my inverter starts freaking out. My monitor starts turning on and off 
and then the motor control board to my max air fan totally craps out on me it's just running full blast with the light on i tried cycling power and as soon as i apply power again this is what happens <laughs> i can't believe this all right i probably shouldn't show my serial number on youtube but um this board was made in late 2021 so uh, tell me if I have the updated board that supposedly fixed this issue. Okay, so this is not a final install. I'm just kind of doing a gut check here. Uh, this is that little uh, LED driver that I replaced. It can also be used to drive motors. Thankfully, I held on to this. And uh, yeah, that's a $2 component. But guess what? It can handle an input voltage of 35 volts. I'm also kind of disappointed my uh, little 300 watt inverter can't handle the uh, charging voltage that I'm getting and it keeps cutting out. So I guess it's not just the max air fan, but uh, we're just going to do a little gut check here. And uh, OK, so that is turning the wrong way. Okay, so obviously I lose the uh, temperature control feature, which I actually never used on here anyways. And I can only go one direction right now. If I get a dual pull, dual throw switch, I can fix that. But uh, this gets me exhaust again. And the speed is variable. It's actually infinitely variable. So it's, it's kind of an upgrade from uh, this. And uh, if that motor controller doesn't fry or overheat i think i'm going to keep it like this permanently uh, because it's it's a lot better than this ui which beeps a lot and is really hard to figure out how to use in the dark these buttons are kind of a different shape but these aren't so <laughs> i don't know um i feel like i'm kind of giving my fan an upgrade here Okay, I'm definitely getting some sort of power spike here. Uh, the fan revved way up and at the same time the inverter started beeping. So it was sitting at 14.4 because my batteries are fully charged and then the fan revved up a lot faster. So it, it's like it was hitting like 16 volts or something. Um, I don't know if it's the solar charge controller or if I'm again having like an intermittent connection between the bus and the battery because the battery should be kind of acting like a buffer or maybe it's the battery itself. I don't know if that's going through a voltage regulator. I, I don't think so. Um, yeah, we're just gonna go back to basics. <sighs> Look at all the connections, make sure nothing's hot. Okay, 14.56, that's on the charge controller. And then we go over, we go over to the fuse bar, 14.54. So we're not even losing that much. Uh, it's probably because we're not solar charging that much. And uh, yeah, everything seems to be working fine now. Okay, we have an exhaust fan again. It was a pain getting those wires back up there. I'm gonna take that apart again, so I'll do a better job of that. Uh, I still need to get a dual pull double throw switch, and I also wanna see if I can desolder the LED that's on that motor driver board. It would be pretty funny if I was able to fix this with like a $5 switch and a $2 motor driver. That would actually make me really happy. But as for uh, what killed the motor board, I do think it was way over volted, way over 14.6. It was just for a second, like the fan speed surged and then it came back down. And that was the same time that the inverter started freaking out. I think this must be an issue with the solar charge controller, but I don't think this is anything new. 
I think this is probably the first time I've run the Max Air fan with full batteries without a regulator, and it's probably the first time I've been using my monitor with my batteries fully charged. So apparently everything else that's in my van is able to hold up to those momentary power spikes. It's not ideal. I kind of wish I had like a higher quality charge controller. I can't even reprogram that charge controller without a Windows machine, and I use a, a Mac for video editing. So I can't adjust any settings on there, and I tried setting up a little like improvised data logger pointing my GoPro at my multimeter, but it didn't happen again today. So I'm just gonna let it ride and hope that I don't have any other problems. I also ordered a higher quality power supply for my Starlink dish. That's gonna be shipped to my friend in Anchorage. So I need to go to Alaska and then hopefully I can start getting better download speeds off of my Starlink dish. And then hopefully I'll be done with all these electrical issues. I can't believe this. I was editing this video and the fan started running and my inverter started freaking out. Anyways, the next video I'm really excited about. Um, I've already filmed it. I'm in Montana right now and it's really beautiful here. So stay tuned for that one.